So we're pulling into Pat Brennan's dairy farm just here now. Um, top farmers, himself and his father, running things really well. The yard is immaculate. We were here fitting the system. Um, Holstein Friesian, high EBI, high output herd, um, just on the border of Leash and Kilkenny. Um, just after driving through Durrow Village there, so we're going to get uh, we're going to get up with Pat and have a quick chat and uh, see what's going on. Whereabouts are we in comparison to? I suppose is this North Kilkenny? Pat? North Kilkenny, we're just on the border. We're kind of uh, near Ballyragget three miles from Ballyragget three miles from Durrow, so we're kind of that's the area we're in. Very good. Yeah. And is it we're just dairy you're at? Just a fine lot of sheds there. Yeah, it's dairy. We kind of. Uh, Farming about 250 acres and we 140 odd cows. We breed kind of replacement heifers there as well, so kind of, yeah, it's kind of a. There's the first laser spreader there. Yes, it's, good, yeah. it's fresh, Amazon. I see the owl lad is there too, he's still involved. Oh, he's, my father is uh, involved just ever nearly, and uh, yeah, it's kind of. No fork tip too was busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah, sure. You'd... At home myself, we're looking kind of getting into young farmer schemes and different things you probably made available then. I didn't, I kind of was one of those ones that came back farming full time and... You came back to Australia, was it? Yeah, in 2007 and when I came back installation they kind of finished up and a lot of things that you kind of missed out on and... Yeah, I never qualified course. for a young farmer, I was always... Oh, yeah. And you had a green cert and Green cert and all, I was under 35, but I was... Uh, Always farming too long. It's been a five year new farmer, I think it's a five year limit, and I always yeah. kind of missing out on those things. But, uh, she got on already right, without yeah, it. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make or break it, no, I suppose. No. Um, and you worked for Tynings before that then? Yeah, I worked for John Tynings, they're contracting for a couple of years as well. So They're, uh, they're good operators, aren't they? They always get busy now. Yeah, all year yeah. yeah, they pull our beat at home, so they do. So we're going into spread a Washing down with a harder washing, harder, yeah. yeah. With this lovely T7 210 out with Shaw's and the Abbey tanker. Where did you get that? I uh, just bought there in Abelique's, uh Edwin Pratt's there in Abelique's. We bought that through him there back back in 2020. So we have it over five years now at this stage. Yeah. Happy enough with it, yeah. 2750. Yeah, it's a single axle. Like, yeah, because well, we're debating at home whether we we'll go tandem axle the next time. What do you think? I suppose the pros and cons are maybe far more expensive and yeah. But then you have maybe your weight spread well, over two axles and rotation tires. It's compaction, yeah. maybe have a steering axles as well. But um, yeah, it's, it's brings out a lot of muck too. The big tire. Oh, sure does. And you have four over two as well. But uh, I suppose at bigger than that tank, you probably it's not really have to probably go tandem axles. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're going to use uh, the Trimble Auto Steer system just to yeah. spread spread these. It's a help, I suppose, with the, the lack of visibility with the trail and shoe. I suppose more is that a trail and shoe or a dribble bar? It's Sorry. a trail and shoe. Trail and shoe. Yeah, but um, it's hard enough to see that. But your main, obviously, your main reason for buying it, the system and using it is fertilizer. We'll talk about that. But um, yeah, well, um, just kind of have the system on the tractor, so I kind of make use of as much as I can with trail and shoe or whatever. Yeah. Rain, mow, and like, but um. I kind of find it works really well. You the field all set up and all, it's great. Yeah, the fields are all mapped, just so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there are the guidance lines you've left the, in the field. Yeah, there I have the field maps, so there are my AB lines, so. Yeah. They and you're on them. range point, aren't you? I'm on range point, and yeah. And were you told maybe to, I suppose, the drift, I suppose, that every year, or kind oh, of yeah, a couple to, of years, yeah. update the. Yeah, update it, I yeah. don't think the boundaries make a difference. No, it doesn't. I had the boundary set in from a previous system. I had a GBX oh, 350. Yeah. So they automatically yeah. changed across onto the new yeah. screen. And, um, uh, th yeah, how did that How did that work? Did they, I suppose, did, did Aiden, was it Aiden, Aiden which? Aiden fitted the system and he um, moved Everton across. Moved Everton across from the old system onto a new system. So I Some had job, yeah. Very little, no. So it was there really just implements everything was there kind of as. You want is left off more or less. Yeah. So yeah. it's very class, yeah. And say the 350, so you had the GFX 350, which is a 7 inch display with the NAV 500 receiver, which is, I suppose, the manual guidance receiver. You, you got a good bit of use out of the manual guidance, but why did you see the need to upgrade? Or? I bought a GPS controlled fertilizer spreader this year on Amazon, 3 ton, fully section That's controlled. That's the one we saw there, yeah. Yeah, it's a um, full section controlled hydraulic driven spit spinners on it so yeah. um, I just thought the screen was too small maybe for 
Yeah, we had a chat about that. Control and I went for the bigger screen and then I decided to, and it's going that far, going off the steer because it's spreading maybe wider width, 24 metres, and just made life that much easier and more accurate. You were saying as well, the motion sickness because catching a small bit. Well, you're travelling at speed and maybe in the field and you're trying to watch the screen at speed and try to keep things yeah. on track. It's, I just kind of, you're kind of, I found it getting half dizzy. You don't have to watch the screen at all. Well, that's it, like you're, fair, like you hit the, you have the, the gauge, the gauge uh, steer at the headland, that's it, the tractor steers up up the field and, and you, you're a passenger basically, you're watching. And your guidance lines are there from the day lines, one, I suppose. I, uh, yeah, so the, they're set up from day one, so everything's saved, so would you go to a new field and start a new task, it's just a matter of uh, continuing on. It's yeah. Very easy, yeah. user friendly to work. I know, it was, a, it was a good idea. When you were going upgrading the 350 screen to Isobus control, you were going to go bigger because the screen would have been under pressure with, with the split screen, I suppose. Yes. Um, so when you were going for the bigger screen, we were talking about all the steer and it did work out, I suppose. These are kind of hummed and hawed for a while, but eventually yeah. you took the plunge. <laughs> and uh, it was a bit of an investment, but we hope, and maybe the accuracy, you see savings in fertilizer use. Yeah. You have to be more aware of how we spend our fertilizer and Oh, well, like yeah, that. your section control is going to make a huge difference, but but I suppose all, from manual guidance to auto steer, it's uh, it's a huge jump well, as well. It's, 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 there's no errors, like it's yeah. no driver error. It's completely the system is GPS is controlled and the uh, tractor and the spreader. So yeah, savage. It is you. You, you enter in you, your application rates and your spreading widths, and that's it. You're you, you monitor things after that. You're a passenger and such. Yeah. Do you think um, you could put a kind of a I suppose a someone that's not that used to working machinery up on an auto steer with section control, do you think it's, it's nearly driving itself? I sure do, you still have to be kind of aware of the system and... Be able to work the screen. To work the screen as well, but it, yeah. it is pretty user friendly, but um, it is like... A, you can trust it, someone, uh, with a bit of training. Well, like, yeah, well, yeah, you can trust Labour's someone. an issue, like... Well, you, know, you can trust people that it's going to be spread accurately, you're not going to be overlapping or missing, yeah. you know what I mean? That, um, like you see there, like it's... No overlaps, no skips. It's, it's it's bang on, like so. It is, yeah. I suppose maybe using this system for the training shoe, it's easier to control your application rates because you know your coverage for each load, each load. Mm -hmm. So if you want to spend a thousand gallons to acre of whatever, you can work that out. It's it's yeah, one load, and you know your speed, and that's this. Because with the training shoe, maybe take or slurry or water or slurry, there's no be variances in flow rate. So it's a kind of a good way. Of you're, um, you're spreading, spreading yeah. rates. Well, I know with slurry tanks, I suppose you have that formula to work it out because you know exactly what's in the tank. Yeah. With umbilical umbilical systems, you're probably looking into a flow meter to be getting that sort of uh, a reading. You would because you don't know exactly. Yeah. You know your tank holds 27,000 500 gallons. And, gallons yeah. and it spreads 0.57 of a hectare. And that's, you know, that's a thousand gallons an acre. Yeah. So it's, and it's, it's important to... Uh, if well, you, that's it, like, you want to put out enough and... Fertilizer's very expensive. Slurry, right? exactly, fertilizer's very expensive. And I suppose slurry is very... It's a valuable nutrient as well, yeah. so you want to be making good use of it, and the better accuracy you have, the better it is. Have you ever looked into, um, I suppose, slurry separation or liquid fertilizer? It's kind of trendy enough there at the at minute. At the moment, no, you haven't looked into it. Um, um, There's a guy close enough here spreading liquid fertilizer. Um, Noel Kendall, did you ever come across him? No. no um, I suppose it, going forward, maybe on how derogation goes, it might be an issue with storage or maybe trying to get nutrients off farm. Maybe that's storage operation would be an easier way to reduce your nutrients and yeah. export it off farm. Yes. I don't know. It's, it's, I suppose it, it's only. It's coming, like it's coming new it's in Ireland and maybe it's something that's want to take off more. Yeah, it's interesting anyway, yeah. yeah. Big big uh, investment those slurry separators. I'm sure that's it, I think, for a, a contractor. Farm, like. A farmer owned machine is kind of an on runner. No, but, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's probably you uh, see it in Northern Ireland now, those contractors have it land into your yard and yeah. do the whole job. Yeah, they'll pump slurry from a tank separate into another tank and I suppose for training shoe systems it's a it's a good thing because maybe you have no lines left in the field. That's, it's, yes. It's, it's liquid. It's not. Uptake is very quick. Exactly. And um, you're going to have issues with maybe soil contamination or 
coming back in in the second your signage ground. I heard that can be an issue with, with oh, trailers. Should like we see it? It does. Being Tiny a dairy farmer, I suppose we also have plenty of harder washings. We dilute slurry very well, yeah. regardless. Because is that, is that directed into the slurry tank? We pump it around during yeah, the maybe right. close period or maybe springtime. That's when we go actually tanks are well watered down and it works well with the training shoe. Then that the nutrients are getting to the roots quicker and you don't have a line of crusty material yeah. left the, on the ground. Oh, it makes sense, sorry. It's fine fields. Yeah, it's a side issue, you know, the cows graze it. On and off, say, but it's usually cut your cross side of it. It has to be good land around here. Here, we all be good land, like, yeah, yeah. it's... When you're back to our zone now, it'll be very dry, but I reckon it'll be very dry. Here, we're kind of... Middle of the road, we're not... West, we're not... In a mean way, we, we manage better, maybe, in the dry summer than... I know if you go we're towards Castle Comer, you're getting some of that is wet enough, yeah, is it? Yeah, Castle Comer is down back of the hill. Yeah. So, even from that hill, this way is grand. It's Doro is very dry, but you go to the other side of that hill, you're six months winter. Yeah. Whereas all week, you have cows out here in mid February, cows will be out grazing. Yeah. You hope to have out mid, 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 mid November grazing by night by day, so like you get. It's a short winter, so in that sense. Do you have any issues with docks? I'm not sure to keep spraying. It's, it's yeah. this is a new grass seed and I was sprayed in Minnesota in 2022 when it was spray, sprayed this year again for ducks. It's, it's looking very clean there now. I know, it's, yeah, it, was, uh, it got harder there back in um, back there. It stuns the growth a bit, doesn't it? It does a bit, but sure, it's. <laughs> it causes us having ducks taken over. You couldn't look at them, like. Oh, yeah, exactly. So you have to. Yeah. It's all about control. And you spray as often as you like, but the laws come back to some stage. So you just, have to spray every couple of years. We have that. We have a new spot spraying system, kind of on the market now. It's um, it's coming from Silas Engines in England. It's quite cool. Like it's kind of reading the ground and picking out the docks, especially. But um, should target spray the dock rather than blanket spray the field. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Individual nozzle control and um, sure. it's going to uh, go on to thistles and wheat and nettles and uh, ragwort and things like, rushes. I think next year. So. Ah, it's cool. It's no, it's worth looking at. Like, uh, oh, sure it is because especially your problem is your. You want to clover is a big one, I think. Yeah, but exactly. So you're spreading, you're spraying just while it's needed. The clover's not getting to work, so your grass is not getting stunted. You're spreading, you're killing the weeds. It's still yeah. Your, um, if we can get contractors to see the value, like they'll be getting paid more. It's a premium service, like to a dairy farm or whatever. It's not. It's, it's not going to be a dairy farmer going to buy it. No, as no, such. no. But uh, the contractor, yeah. even for his own crops, that he's the savings of pesticides alone. If they are, you know what I mean? Spray. Yeah. It's massive. You much left? That's our empty. Just it's a premium plus tanker. What does that mean? Well, I suppose it's sprung drawbar. It's the, not too sure it's how well inspected it is, but there's air brakes on it. It's um, yeah, there's air brakes on it. Yeah. No sensing and all that. So. I find it very good, it's very safe on the road. As road sense it. So how does that, what's that mean again? That's... There's a valve on this, on this one drawbar, so... Um, the more weight you have on the tank, the more braking pressure you get through the air brakes. Savage. So, yeah. your tank is empty. Um, you know, you'll never hit the brakes on the road, you won't lock up, and the, if you're fully loaded, you yeah. have more brake pressure then when you're fully loaded, so it's, a, it's, it's very safe, like it's... Is there load sensing on... It's fertilizer spreaders now, or oh, that's that's weight cell. Weight cell, so yeah, that's kind of how the Amazon. They're works. able to, I suppose you tell them how big the field is, and well, sure, I suppose the GPS is the field mapped, so you just tell the application rate of the fertilizer you're spreading. It'll put it down to a grain at the end of the It'll, field. You can all see it all auto calibrating. It, it's savage. If I want to spread 100 acres, and my application rate, wherever it is, I enter that into the, into the screen. I know my spreader, exact amount, amount I need, and. I go back and watch out the spreader, but it's not left. You know, it's some technology, it's, isn't it? And you know, it's been spread 100 percent accurately with the water steer and the system that's headline control. Like yeah. you're not firing filtration to ditches. You're not water courses. It's no sticks to throw you. There's no overlapping. So I is savage. The saving the fertilizer alone, I think, pays for the systems. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Well, like the, I think Chagas has a study there. Um, you should be saving 10% using guidance, even with manual guidance if you're yeah. using it properly. If you're 10% of a fertilizer bill for a dairy farmer, it would be like 10 grand. Couple that then with the section control and you're no overlapping. Yeah. The fertilizer you going could be up to 15%. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
not only the price of it, I suppose, but environmental impacts. We're limited on how much we can spread, so you want to make sure at your spread is working. And the derogation, spread will be, yeah, derogation. Yeah. So like, do you use? You mightn't have used the system yet for it, or maybe with the three fifty, but proof of placement. No, I never use that. Nowadays. No, then I suppose if you, there's these new, well, they're not new, but the the cloud platforms that Trimble are offering, you can have all that feeding back to the desktop, like you know. Yeah. But, uh, someday you might have to, you might have that's to show all this. You know. That's the way it's going. Like or yeah. which, which fields are getting the fertilizer, which aren't, or yeah. even slurry that's. Um, that's going to be an issue with the grazing platform. Maybe is there too much story being spread on the grazing platform versus maybe out farms? Yeah. That's uh, I think that's the next place for the one from town. That's maybe have to prove that you're going to the the fair out farms with with slurry is much anywhere else. Makes sense. Yeah, it's coming. So as the technology helps with all that. That's you know, complain as much as possible. It's like any of these hard watch you can pay. Oh sure, it's all make life easier, yeah? Yeah. The New York house there. There are cows there, yeah. Okay. What breed are they? Uh, Holstein Friesian, probably 70% uh, Holstein, high EBI kind of. Um, be high enough to use them hers. Uh, there's your Jesse B. What did your father make of the honest there? He, he doesn't know much about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, no, he never really spent fertilizer the last couple of years, so which is always me. And, yeah, uh, you were called in kind of like. I think more technology on the tractor, unless he wants to drive it. <laughs>